Hi, welcome to the Low Level Devil channel. This is going to be my first set of videos which will be related to low level development on the Raspberry Pi hardware. This first set of videos is going to be based on a set of tutorials by Sergei Matyukovich on GitHub. I'll paste the link in the description. It's a very interesting set of tutorials which goes in depth on how things are implemented in Linux as well. In these videos, I will focus only on the Raspberry Pi side of things but we'll also show you where to find the information in the data sheets and device tree files that you need to do this sort of bare metal development. I'm going to try to keep these videos fairly short, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, so I'll set the, separate them into multiple sections. In this first section, we're going to go over the setup of the main project mainly. I'm going to assume that you have at least some experience with C and assembly programming, so I'm not going to spend time explaining what all the code does unless it's directly related to the hardware. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code for the development and Linux for the operating system. If you're running Windows, I would suggest you create a Linux virtual machine. If you don't want to create a Linux virtual machine and are running Windows, then there are other ways to run the cross-compiler, for instance, following Sergey's method of using Docker. I'll leave that process up to you. As a first step, we're going to need to install the cross-compiler to compile ARM code on an Intel machine. If you're running a Debian-based OS, you can run the following command sudo apt install gcc-arch64-linux-gnu. Any other non-Debian OS, I assume you know how to find a cross-compiler for your system. And we'll see here, if we run dash V, we show the version of the compiler for that specific architecture. Now let's create the basic structure for the project. I'll create a new directory for the project and change into it. And create a couple of subdirectories, src and include. Then I'm going to open Visual Studio Code in this directory. Alright, so we'll create a make file here first. And along with some initial header files, just to get things kind of started here. S, kernel dot C over here to linker script mm dot s for our memory management and utils dot s for any utility classes and the mini uart dot c file I like to include a common header here for some common types that I'll use in the project. And we had a peripheral section with a base.h. The code developed in here will be very similar to Sergey's lessons, but I'll diverge from him on a little bit on the design. And now let's go ahead and start with the make file. I'm going to start by adding a variable for the Raspberry Pi version because we want to be able to build for both Pi 3 and 4. And then I'm going to add a variable for the boot mount, which is where I'm going to copy the files after compiling. And now after that, we'll set up a base name for the cross compiler, which we installed. Yours might be slightly different if you're using a different cross compiler than I am. Next we'll create some C options to send to the C compiler. Since this is bare metal, we will not have standard libraries. And it'll be freestanding. We want to pass our include directory as well and specify to use general registers only. Now for the assembly options, you're going to pass the include path again. Then we'll set up a build and a source directory. And 
Now we start with the all build section. For all we build the kernel image. For clean we want to clean out the build directory, remove it and clear up any in image files. And now for all compiled C objects we'll reference their C files here be sure to create their build directory if it doesn't exist. Then we'll call the arm cross compiler GCC with the C options. Specified compile only and the output file. And we're going to do the same for the assembly files here. Just copy and paste and change a couple things. Should be it. And we're going to create some variables for the files we're going to be compiling and building. We're using the wildcard for all C files. And we'll do the same for assembly files. all of the object files here. These would be the object files related to the C files. And we also want to add to that the object files related to the assembly files. And change this too. And let's add a section for our dependency files. All right. And include. And now for the section on our kernel image. going to depend on the linker script and object files. We'll add some echo output here to display the variables. That way we know if we pass them in we have the right values. We'll do for the RPI version and let's do for the mount too. and an extra line. Now we're going to run the cross compiler's LD command to link the object files into one executable ELF file. to convert that ELF file into a raw binary executable image. We'll use object copy for that. And now if we're going to be building with the Pi 4 image, we want to rename the kernel file so we can have both on the disk at the same time makes for testing on multiple devices easier. So we'll use this if eq rpi version 4. And we're going to copy the kernel 8.image to our boot mount as rpi4.image. Otherwise we'll just keep the default name kernel 8.image. 
So these get copied onto the SD card. We'll, we'll cover the SD card more in detail later. And finally, we're going to copy the config fi config.txt file there as well. Okay, so let's test out our make file. First, we open a Madu terminal window and like to run make clean first, just in case there any previous files were there. Then we just run make. Now we can see from the output that the files we created were compiled, and even though they are empty, it runs through the build steps, and it looks like there was one error here due to a missing config text file. So let's just go ahead and create that file. First, we need to specify that we're using ARM 64-bit, so it picks up the correct kernel file name when booting. Next, I like to add in some UART second stage debug info that's supplied by the firmware. That helps debug if there's any UART issues or if the code's just not working. And then we add this BT overlay because without it, sometimes blue tooth devices will conflict. And then we have our Raspberry Pi 4 section to rename the kernel for Pi 4. Now if we just rerun the make command here, we'll see that it succeeds. Now let's start writing some of the code. We'll start with the base.h under peripherals. Add a pragma once at the top, which is a way to tell the compiler only include the file once, much shorter than the using the if defs, and it's very widely supported. So then we're going to add some an if here. If the pi version is 3, we're going to use the pbase starting with 3f. Else, if it's version 4, then we're going to use the pi 4's pbase, which starts at fe. And then finally an else section here, so it'll break the build if, if the version is not supported, or if you just forget to provide one. And, and now I'll show you where these values come from. First we can go to the Raspberry Pi documentation site. I'll put the URL in the description. Under Documentation, Hardware, Raspberry Pi, and the Pi 3 is a BCM2837, which is a modified 2835. The 2835 has a full data sheet here. So let's go to that. You should definitely down this, download this uh, PDF file for reference. And the Pi 4 is a BCM2711. So let's download that one's full data sheet. Now opening the data sheet for the 2835, we can go down to section 1.2.3. And it has the physical addresses. There we go. And this section says that the uh, address range starts at the beginning of the address, 0x20. As you'll see right here. And this address section is for peripherals and ZE00 to start with is the bus address. So when the peripheral is showing the bus address starting at ZE, it'll translate to 20. Now let's look at the Pi 4. So the Pi 4 also defines this data. You'll find all kind of information about the peripheral address in here as well. Uh, but you know what, instead of looking at this, we can actually use the device tree information from the Laz Raspberry Pi Linux source tree. And, and I'll paste that address in the comment section as well. So let's go ahead and open that up. So 
So you see Raspberry Pi, Linux, and if we go under Arch and ARM boot in the DTS section, here we'll find all the DTS files for the Raspberry Pi. And remember the BCM2835 is what is used as a base. So we can open this DTSI file in here and let's see. We see this uh, SOC section, which has a section for ranges. And then in the ranges, we can see the bus address and peripheral address, which were mentioned. Let's see, but we're waiting. We put 3F as the start address, but remember the PI 3 is a 2837, so let's open that. 2837 is a modified 2835. So you can see in this one's ranges we have the right same bus address, but here we have the the address starting at 3F. So now let's go into the 2711 file. And in this one we also see the SOC ranges with the bus address the same place, and here's where you see the FE as the uh, start of the peripheral address. So that's where these two important addresses come from. It shows you where to find this information when you're developing. And I think that's a good stopping point for this first video. So in the next video we'll continue on with some of the other header files and get on to the boot code eventually. And again, welcome to the Low Level Devil channel. And if you like this video, please uh, subscribe, comment, and uh, thanks for watching.